Now fired up and give this great Butler team a big challenge. Well, the Wayne State Charters would love to get a victory here at home. They started out with a victory this year. They have lost four games in a row. The defense has not played poorly, but offensively, they've been struggling. Mark Friday, the starting quarterback who injured himself earlier in the year, is back in the lineup. He says he's healthy, says he's ready to go. And so, Skip Mackles, yes. if they can get some offensive firepower up there, perhaps Wayne can steal a game here today. Well, I'll tell you what. Friday is the, going to be the difference today. They do have to throw the ball. Last week, the defense against Ashland didn't play back left. The problem is they can't put any points on the board. If Wayne State is able to get those short passes, establish themselves offensively, keep that Butler defense on the field, perhaps we can see a Tartar victory here today? Possibly. What they have to do is play ball control once again. They, both teams are going to play ball control. More so, Wayne State. Okay, Brian, Brian Van Gorder, the first-year head coach at Wayne State, was a former player here for the Tartars, was a linebacker, an outstanding player. We understand from his players that he is a very strict disciplinarian, but also very loyal to the green and gold. He wants to restore Tartar pride here, and had some trouble his first year, Skip, but yeah. they are expecting great things from Brian Van Gorder in this Tartar program. You know, I think Brian, and as we take a look at the Butler head coach, you both guys played at their respective schools. I think it's great to come back and be the head coach in the school you played at. It's got to be great, especially for Ken LaRose, the Butler head coach. He's 3-1, and one, a yes. very strong team. What a way to start out a campaign. Well, the two teams are taking the field. Wayne State will be kicking off and defending the south goal. we got to do more stadium steps. <laughs> <laughs> Butler receivers are, are deep and back. Deepest for Butler is John Hill, a wide receiver who also returns kickoffs for them. Along with Hill, we have Richard Johnson, number 38, and 34, Kevin Kimball, who's really the, the star. The kickoff comes from Nick Palavit, and this game is underway. That time by Wayne State. They all came down. As you can see on the field, this is a fired up team. Uh, this is homecoming, Clint. Uh, uh, they need a big win. The balloons are going, the fans are going, the band's going. We got everything going. That kickoff, kickoff was taken by the big running back, Kimball. Well, as you can see, Jason Stahl is starting quarterback for Butler. Kimball, expect to hear his name a lot, an excellent running back for the Butler Bulldogs. Yeah, he just, uh, I think uh, last week, uh, 2,000 yards for his career, became the fifth all-time rusher in Butler history. Ball is handed off to Kimball. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage, or right at the line. About the first player to get back there for Wayne State was Kevin Worthy. Eric Ruth and Goloszewski, Goloszewski on the front line for Wayne State. Darren King and Evans, all strong players. Tom Beer, we're going to call that name a lot as that in that starting linebacker core for the Tartars. Well, they're playing that stunt four, Wayne State is, uh, reminiscent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Michigan State football team. So you're going to see that middle linebacker making a lot of tackles. And in that backfield, Her Herbert and Hawk, the names of the call. Kimball gets the ball, sees a hole on the left side. He's hit and continues to run. Finally brought down by a host of charter tackles. Number 34, Kevin Kimball off the left side. Kimball's a nice back right now, as you, as you did see, and we're going to take a look at it right now. You can't arm tackle Kimball. That's not going to go. No, no. Kimball, they're a little cross blocking up front. Kimball's going to get hit right here, and he runs right through it. You're going to have to put a helmet on this young man and knock him down. In their games last weekend, Kimball went over the 2,000 yard mark, becoming the fifth highest yard gainer in Butler history. Stahl went back to pass and he found his man, Eric Voss, for completion in front of the Wayne State defender. That is going to get Butler a first down. First and ten Bulldogs. Ball is at their own 39-yard line. Back up to the ball. Two wideouts left. One man in motion. Let's go, D. Come on, D. Ball goes to Kimball, picks his way through a couple of holes, and he's hit by, again, a host of Tartar tacklers. 
Led by Tom Beer. We said we'd call his name today. Yes, we sure did. And it looks like the count of trades going on. You can see the, the backside tackling guard pulling come up. And the big fellas wait for them to set up the blocks. We're going to hear Kimball's name a lot, and this offensive line's a pretty good one also. Pretty good size, and we'll get into that as we go along. Pick up of about two yards on the play, makes it second and eight. The wide out right for the Bulldogs. And once again, the ball goes to Kimball. Doesn't pick up much. What, what you're seeing here, Cliff, is going to be very interesting when I'm just seeing naturally just about five or six plays of, that has occurred here, but they're using the majority of the defenders up close to the line of scrimmage to stop Kimball. So we have man-on-man -man coverage going on in the wideouts. Now, this is a respectable club. Butler throwing the football. So uh, we're going to see something downtown. Let's take a look at Kimball right now. He's about six yards deep. Any good tailback once the ball gets it. They want to get the ball as deep as they can to see the hole created for them. Not much of a hole that time, though. There it is, man-on-man. -man. Fakes the handoff, looks left. And he completes the pass to his tight end rolling out. That's big John Hill. Hill picks up enough yardage for a first down before he's knocked out of bounds. We talked about running being a key for these Butler Bulldogs, but they've opened up in their first series with a couple of passes against the Tartars. Yeah, you know what? I, you know, I just said they were going to man. They disguised it very well that time, Wayne State. They were in a zone, but Stahl was predetermined he was going to throw the football to. He had a man down the field on the sideline wide open that time. Eric Voss wide right for Butler. But a pitch to Kimball. He comes over the right side, finds a hole, and is tripped up first by Bernard Evans and, and here it is right here nice size six foot 205 pounds good looking young man uh, as you mentioned once again 2,000 yards in a career nice career he's had a very very nice career down in Butler does he go on to that next level cliff I don't know Kimball picked up five yards on that play second down Butler ball is at the Wayne State 43 Fake to Kimball, and he gets Voss on the reverse, coming around the left side. Can he get around Ebby Herbert? Not quite. Herbert does make a tackle on Voss, but not until after he picks up maybe two or three yards. This is this is smart, trying to keep this Wayne State defense honest. And Eddie, he's been involved in the last couple of years in a lot of plays here. And Eddie's doing his job by staying home. And let's take a look at it right here. Good fake this time. We got the end around. He's coming, got the ball in the wrong hand. Just a little coaching critique. And a good tackle by Eddie. Eddie Herbert anticipated that well as we go back to live action. Again, Kimball gets the ball over the left side. And another first down for Butler. Well, exactly. Exactly what we mentioned during the open, Cliff. Uh, very controlled. Kimball, Kimball, a little razzle-dazzle, a little pass. But the bread and butter is going to be Kimball. It's going to be redundant all day long. We're going to keep on saying this, but what are you going to do? Here's a back that they'd like to use. We're talking, talking with the coaching staff before the game. They say we're going to use the big fella. He's the horse today. Well, Butler hasn't had too much trouble moving the ball against Wayne State. Another first down at the Wayne State 35. Kimball gets the ball. Left side leaps a tackler and then is rained under by the Tartars. And once again, this is the counter tray. Uh, more, more and more teams are going to this right now. And it's, a, and it's a good play from the fact that uh, it creates a, some misdirection up front, but you still have to have offensive line that can get out and pull, and you got to have that onside to hold some people off. Maybe a gain of two. Are there adjustments the Tartars can make against Butler at this stage? Well, probably, probably nothing in a stunt four right now. Uh, they're just giving up two or three yards on a crack cliff. It's very hard right now. What they have to do is stop the initial... First, the first down, the first play of the series, they have to stop. Kimball had seven carries for 25 yards already, and he gets the ball on a pitch, picking up at least a few more. Bernard Evans on the tackle for the Tartars. Once again, here's the pitch right. Trying to lead block with the fullback coming in. He gets a little soft touch there. Good pursuit. This is what they have to do. Put Butler in third and six, third and seven, really, Cliff, to answer your question. Now, let's see. Stahl has been successful with those short passes so far. Back for another one. Looks, lets it fly. Incomplete. His receiver fell down. Great job. 
Again, Big John Hill was there. Rashawn Hardy on the coverage for the Tartars. And Hill just falls down. And what happens is a little bit of the rain, I think, played. That we did have a little sprinkle earlier that the, it has a nice crown on the field. As you can see, it's a beautiful field. But it does slope down. Water's draining down a little bit, footing a little loose down at that end. Was fourth and about 5-4 Butler, but they are going for it. The 13th play of the opening drive for the Bulldogs. Stalled back to pass. He looks left, throws it, and it is intercepted by the Tartars. An excellent interception. Tom Beard, there's that name. Tom Beard once again dropping, dropping, dropping. Staller, we're going to see the replay on this, is, is looking for a receiver. They're going motion right. It's not confusing anybody. Defense is doing a good job. He throws it in. This is thick, folks. You can see that there's four defenders around this receiver. Well, Greg Gower had went into motion, left for Butler, and in fact was the receiver, intended receiver, but there was just a gang of targets out there. First and 10, Wayne State. Ball at their own 18. Mark Friday, quarterback, gets the ball, goes to his star receiver, Ray Ponder, and they pick up about eight yards on their first play. Larry Winters with the tackle for Butler. Well, you're going to see a lot of this, and this is like playing catch right now. If you can't complete this pass, then you can't play football, folks. This is a five-yard hitch. And Friday completes it to Ponder. Ponder's got to get more involved in his offense, Cliff, for them to be effective. Uh, I'm not talking getting the ball thrown. I'm talking screens, ends around, get the ball in his hands. Pickup of nine, second and one. Friday back, rolls left, looks left, lets it fly. He heard you talking, Skip. He threw it to Ponder, just overthrew him out of bounds. Well, he did the right thing that time. He threw the ball away. He knows he's got another down to pick up this first down. There's no need to throw this into some thick area, so he threw it away. That's a sign of maturity. Last year, Clifford, he, he might have tried to sneak that one in there. This year, the ball's 20 yards over everybody's head. Let's go back, line up, and let's do it again. But the Tartar coaches love Friday. He is a big kid, has a strong arm, six foot two, twenty-five. put some zip on it. And Ray Ponder, he was all conference last yes, year. He and was. Seventh in the conference in receptions this year. Handoff. This is close. They tried to pick up the short yardage, handing off to the fullback, a rain of Butler Bulldogs on the tackle. What do we got, Cliff? We got that right foot or left foot business going on here? <laughs> I think the official's going to ask for my, They're going to ask for a measurement. They want to find out for sure. Good job, Joe. Nice job, O-line. Dave Kathman, one of those booking defenders oh. that you talked about on the tackle Yes, he Butler. Leads, he leads Butler in tackles to this point right now. Got a nice shot here. This wasn't even close. First down, Tartars. First and 10, Wayne State ball is at the Tartar 30, so at least they pick up a first down in their first series. And, and it's important right now to get that ball out of that, that, that sticky area down there. You certainly don't want to be putting inside your 20. Ray Ponder wide left for Wayne State. Friday over the center. Fakes a handoff, goes back to pass, and a defender is right there. He's brought down by, well, no, he was able to get away. He got a pass away to Ponder. We do have a flag down on the play, but Ponder is running. Goes past the first down marker. And, boy, it looked like a sure sack on Friday. Somehow he gets away. A pickup of 18 if that flag is not against Wayne State. Let's take a look at this now. Kyle Oaks, I think, misses the tackle. He tries to drag him down. Friday uses some good ability there. Gets loose. Finds Ponder, who comes back to him. Uh, we can't see the penalty. It's got to be blocking, blocking downfield. Illegal person downfield. The play took so long to develop that apparently one of the linemen released. Well, I'll tell you what. Right away in the start of the first game that I've done this year, this is a horrible call in my opinion. Unfortunate. Excellent play by Friday. We were talking about him being a big, strong kid. And that's, that was evident and on that play. That's the only way he was able to get away from that sure sack by Kyle Oaks. Gets off a good pass, but the penalty makes it first and 15 for Wayne State. Ball at the Tartar 24. Yeah, the funny thing about this, Cliff, is Ponder caught this ball at about the 36. The ball is on the 30. you got to give a little leeway here, three or four yards. I mean, we're not calling it this close. Um, I don't like to call Wayne State floods all its receivers and backs left, and Friday rolls out that way. This time he this is time. sacked and does not get away. Brought down by Steve Reshevich, the nose guard. 
Well, as we mentioned earlier, you can see this now. We have a, uh, Wayne State has a very inexperienced offensive line. They haven't played together. There's four, four of these young men that haven't played. It's their first opportunity to play college football and uh, this year, I should say. And uh, this is what's going to happen when you have an offensive line. There's some miscues right there. And here's some uh, strength right there, 240, six foot. He was able, as a nose guard, to just come right yeah. through that line and, and put the pressure on Friday. But Wayne State on the short side of the field, again, floods all their receivers left. Friday back, and a handoff real quick to one of the backs in motion, Kevin Whitfield. The old cross buck. That's a good play. Picks up maybe two or three yards. And this is the situation that certainly Wayne does not want to be in, Cliff. Uh, third and extremely long right now. Once again, going back to the situation that they'll have to punt from, say, the kicker would be back by close to the 10-yard line. They certainly don't want to do this because playing right into Butler's hands. Goes to third and 17 for the Tartars now. Ball is at about the 17 or 18 of Wayne State. Everyone wide right. Roll out by Friday right. Chased out of bounds by Aaron Vermilion. So the punt team comes out for Wayne State. Eric Burton, the Wayne State punter. You know, what they're having a problem offensively is what, what is occurring here is they're trying to slide this blocking. Now, when the defense sees Friday rolling out, they're going to go to where they think he's going to end up. They're going to start sliding. We'll get into Eric Voss is deep for Butler to receive the punt. As we said, Eric but Burton to do the punting for the Tartars. Fourth and 17, he lets one go. Nice distance on it, taken by Voss. He goes left and he's hit right there. First one down to make that tackle. Well, Butler takes over the ball, and we'll be back with more Wayne State football after this message. The Incredible Eagles. At their own 33. Quarterback Stahl hands the ball off to Richard Johnson. Pickup of maybe one yard. Richard Johnson, the ball carrier. Not really that much there that time. Uh, it's a fake, just that fake, fake to the tailback and give it to the fullback up close. They've been doing a good job. Wayne State has up front at the moment. Jet, jet, jet. Jason Stahl goes over center. Receivers wide right, fakes the handoff to the fullback, looks down, and lets it fly. That ball is incomplete. Pass intended for Voss, but Voss fell down on what is apparently a slippery Charter Stadium field. Yeah, once again, what's coming in, this is, and you're going to see a great fake by Stahl this time. Let's take a look at the replay. Comes in there, puts the ball in, takes it out, turns his back, looks up field, squares his shoulder. Everything's good, but the receiver's on the ground. That makes it third down and nine for the Butler Bulldogs. Expect a pass on this play. Oh, draw play. He fooled his hand off to Kimball. Well, he might have fooled us, but he didn't fool Wayne. He sure didn't. Marty Moranic was not fooled at all for the Tartars. Hit him after a gain of maybe a yard. Fourth and eight, Butler ball is at the Bulldog 35, and they're going to have to punt. Not surprising, though. They did a great job last week against Ashland for about 57 minutes of the game. A couple of miscues allowed us a couple of scores, but otherwise this defense has played well. Abby Herbert deep for the Tartars. He's a leading punt returner in the conference. He's back under and receives the punt. Make the move and get nowhere. An official flag is down on the play. And this is what, this is what young teams do. Flag down and probably going to be clipping and holding. That was a 42-yard punt for Ron White. And we'll be back with more Wayne State football after this message. Skip 
Mackles here with me in the booth. Stanley Edwards down on the field. Get the football in, oh! 56 homecoming day. The crowd is into it. You might can hear the band in the back. And the Tartars hand off the ball and maybe a pickup of two or three yards. Elgin Reese was the tackler. Joe Goff, the defensive player, Please. converted to fullback, had the ball for the Tartars. What a dream come true, huh, Clifford? <laughs> Gain of three on the play, second down and seven, Let's Wayne State. On. What an aggressive defender last year, a good football player. He was number two on this team in tackles last year, and Co Coach Brian Van Gorder came in, decided he'd be better on the offensive side of the ball, and he's been fantastic back there. Friday Beck makes a handoff on the reverse. Ball is taken by Randono Johnson, and Waylon Stewart makes the tackle. Well, Stanley Edwards is on the sideline and uh, has more to tell us about the game from on the field. Stanley? Well, Stanley Edwards, what are you seeing down there on the field? Okay, listen, I think what Wayne State found out is that they expect Butler to come out with placing smash mouth football. They're going to run it at him and see what they're going to have, and they're going to make him play some good, solid defense. Uh, on offense, lead, uh, Wayne State's concern is getting penetration when Friday rolls out. He's rolling out and getting penetration, which is not allowing him to set up and get his passes downfield. So they're going to try to stop penetration on offense and stop the run on the defensively for the Tartars. Well, Friday just rolled out left in, tried to pass to Ray Ponder, incomplete, but the official's flag was thrown on the play. Don DeCrane was yes. on the coverage for Butler. You know what occurred at that time is right now they, as they open the game clip, they try to run a hit. But Waylon Stewart that time, number 28, for Butler was playing, no, had no part of it. So what's going to happen is that they're going to have to try to run this football, create a little something, and we got defensive holding here to create a first down for Wayne State, which is also helpful, get them out of this thick area. But they got to go with a, a hitch and go or something to create something. But you go hitch and go, you got to get time. You got to get protection. Penalty gives the ball to Wayne State first and 10 at the Tartar 35. Oh, flag thrown there. Four of the Tartar players took off before the ball was snapped. And everybody's looking at the other guy. That's always nice. Mix up of what the count would be on that play. So we go to first and 15, Wayne State. Ball is at the Tartar 30 now, and Brian Van Gorder, head coach of the Tartars, cannot be happy with that. He has said earlier in the season that if his team could just cut down on the turnovers, they'd be a lot farther ahead, probably have a better than the one and four record right now. Well, the problem with that is just that uh, a young team is just natural for these things to happen. You don't like to see it, but it happens. Joe Golf was the ball carrier for the Tartars, brought down by Aaron Vermillion, one of those bookend linebackers for Butler. You know, I think Joe was a fullback in high school also, and you can see some nice high stepping over here. He's going to step over some people, get some yards. Tough kid. To pick up of four yards makes it second and 11. Ball is at 34 of the Tartars. No score in this game in the first quarter. Ooh. Friday just let a pass fly to Randono Johnson, hit him in the arms, and he just couldn't handle it. Ball drops it incomplete. I'll tell you what, this is a dangerous pass, but a guy like Friday can make this thing happen. He's throwing in between zone coverage right now. It's a look in. They're flooding his zone from right, coming to left on quick post. And a uh, little behind it, but possibly a catchable ball. Good coverage by Don DeCrane of Butler on that play, but had Johnson held onto the ball, it would have been complete. Friday just zipped in there. Third and 11, Charter. Ball is at the Wayne State 34. Receivers all right. Friday gets the ball, rolls right. Looks downfield. Stop, lets it fly. And whoa! Class was intended for Kevin Whitfield, Cameron McDaniel on the coverage, and hits both their hands before dropping to the to the stadium. Well, I'll tell you what happens here, folks, is Whitfield gives up on this. This is great protection right here. And Friday's looking, 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 and look at He's waiting for Whitfield to turn around. He didn't complete his pattern. He waited and he had to hang up. If he would have ran, he could have thrown the ball for a home run. And Stanley Edwards would have been right. It would have been a home run. Stanley, Stanley Edwards told us that uh, Wayne State might try a few home run balls against this. Defense, which is very strong against the run, and that one just didn't work for them. So again, Eric Burton back to punt for the Tartars. 
this is getting to be into a possession type of game, uh, Clifford, and, and you certainly don't want to play possession football with Butler because they're going to win. Eric Voss is before the Bulldogs to receive the punt. Burton gets off pretty good punt. End over end, taken by Voss at about the 24. Starts right, goes left, runs through three or four of the would-be tacklers of the starters. Finally brought down by, by Rob Zeno. Well, Butler takes over the ball and will be back with more Wayne State football after this message. Day and Skip Mackles obviously yeah. the fans are right into it. Well, I'll tell you what, there's some great bodies there. I'll tell you, the guy with the W looks like he could be on the line for Wednesday. <laughs> First and ten, Butler Bulldogs. <laughs> you can see Butler has dominated. They have have had the ball seven minutes and ten seconds of this contest already, and they have their first play of a drive now. Stalled back, tries to, oh my goodness. Tries to go for a pass. And Wayne State defender deflects it, but it ends up in the hand of a Butler player. And Coleman makes the tackle that time. Lyman, he does a great job staying home. The, the, it was a, a screen left and it didn't set up real well because there's no pass rush. To get a to get a screen going, you got to have a rush. We we'll got a one minute rush. We got three guys going back. Stahl tries to throw it in. A great catch. But here, this is a great tackle here. That was an excellent tackle. The ball was completed to Richard Johnson, but Marty Moranic is able to hop on the play real quick. Ball gets back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. No gain on the play. Stall back and hands it to Kimball. It goes over the left side before he can get too far. Brought down by Marty Moranic. You know, Clifford's talking about possessions. They open the ball opens up on the 20. The next possession, they get the ball on the 30. The next possession, they started at the 36. More and more, we see how the defense is creating offense. It might take some time, but nobody said this game is going to be a 42 to nothing game. This is going to be within a 14 point game. We well, hear a lot that defense wins football games and championships. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stall rolls right, looks downfield, hits his big fullback out of the backfield before he's tackled by the Tartars. Nice reception by Richard Johnson. Well, he had a couple of receivers that time he could have hit right there. This is a, a nice fake here. He's got some protection coming out here to tackle, looping around. He's got two receivers in the same area. I like this guy, 92. He looks more like a tackle than a tight end. First and 10, Butler. Ball is at the Wayne State, 48. Richard Johnson, six one, two fifteen, good size. Comes out of that backfield, has soft hands. Boy, once he got it, it's hard to bring those guys down. Short drop by Stahl. Looks left, less than pass. Intended for Voss, incomplete. Tony, Tony Hawk, Hawk on the coverage for the Tartars. That's the worst place. Tony Hawk is very aggressive, very quick, responds to the ball very well. If you're going to throw a hit, you certainly don't want to throw it to the wide side of the field where a guy like Hawk with some talent will make that distance, will cover it and quickly recover. Clearly that right side of the Wayne State defensive backfield is very strong. Abby Herbert and Tony Hawk having an outstanding year so far. Second down and 10 ball at the 48 of the Charters. Butler with the ball, no score in this game, first quarter. Stalled back, fakes a handoff, looks left, lets the pass go. And the pass is complete to John Hill, the wide receiver. Tackled by Abby Herbert. Well, as, as we're seeing more and more of this now, we're going to fakes right now. Kimball's being used as a decoy right here. It's a good block there, not by choice, I don't think. Wobbly pass. Just a good catch, good concentration from Herb at that time. They're flooding the zone. John Hill, six foot, 190 pounds, only a junior. He'll be back next year. Picks up nine yards, almost 10 yards, makes it third and a little bit less than one for Butler. And Kemble the ball carry. He goes far enough for a first down. Just leaps over the line. It's funny now, Butler's trying to, uh, they're changing their strategy a little bit, Clifford. Now they're going, using the pass more than the run, and I would be very concerned if I was Wayne State that I'm getting into, I'm getting low into a sense of security here that they're not going to give Kimball the football. 
Just about the end of the first quarter, 13 seconds left, no score, but Butler has been the aggressor in this game. They have the ball now, and they are driving, and they've had almost a 2-1 to one advantage in possession time. Yeah, and this is a very quick quarter. Very, very quick. It just shows you when the ball's on the ground, this possession type of the game we've talked about through the entire the first quarter, what can happen. A very quick first quarter. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. Wayne State zero, Butler zero. And we'll be back with more Wayne State football after this message.